signal units, we still managed to get when we were outside. Can't go back. There are countless spaces here. Our Subzerus Festival in Sumeru City is just one of them. I've entered another space. Before me are flowing sandstone and howling fish. Impossible and surreal sights. All these spaces are empty except for the occasional ones that contain mute puppets rather than people. I can't sense any human presence. And if we take your word for it, the other spaces all had very weird contents. There's another part here. We only received it last night. These spaces have been disappearing one after the other, absorbed by something like a sun in the sky. And now, even the final space has also disappeared. Behind me, a lot of spaces just appeared again from thin air. I get it now. Those spaces are actually... yesterday just happened to end at that moment. Oh, right. Paimon did hear a beep from the Akasha. Did it come from here or from the message? The message. It should have come from the Traveler's Akasha Terminal. After the beep, Traveler said even the final space has also disappeared. <sighs> Traveler, what do you think that final space could have been? All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Was that space actually the real world? But wouldn't a real space just randomly disappearing like that be catastrophic? My impression is that each day in this samsara, only ends at the sound of that beep from the Akasha. Oh, so that's what it is! After the sound of the beep, the final space, the Subzeru's festival, also disappears, and we're taken to the next day. Later on, Traveler also mentioned a bunch of new spaces materializing behind them. Do lots of new spaces appear every day? Paimon's head is spinning. Just what are these spaces anyhow? Well, consider this. For all the horrors of the Archon War, at its heart, it was just a game where a bunch of gods fought over seven seats. So no matter how strange or spooky things may look on the surface, maybe all they point to in the end is a small and simple secret. Wow. The Archon War, huh? That's an analogy and a half. Hey! Where are you going?
need some alone time to think? <sighs> All right, then, Pino won't disturb you. The dance of Subzeros is about to begin. I'm going to go watch it. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead, Dunyarzad? We still have some other stuff to do first. Okay, then. I'll see you later. Have you figured it out yet, Traveler? Time is ticking away. Awesome! What is it? Kaina wants to know. Oh, wait, no. Let's meet up with Nahida first. You can tell us both together. This time, we're gonna get to the truth. back. I've been waiting forever for you two. Judging by the looks on your faces, are you ready to take your Subzerius exam and graduate from the festival? <laughs> okay. First off, have you discovered the hidden truth? already experienced the Subzerus festival many times. <laughs> the day of the festival seems to be in a perpetual samsara. All the bizarre spaces I saw outside the city had one thing in common. A lack of human presence. Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. That doesn't sound right. People in Sumeru don't dream. What a strange phenomenon. Hmm. I can't seem to co- We are all in a dream. It isn't that the people of Sumeru don't dream. Rather, the Akasha is taking their dreams from them. People in Sumeru think they don't dream. But the truth is, the Akasha steals their dreams without them knowing it. And those spaces with no human presence are stolen dreams without their host. That would explain why they sounded so weird when he was trying to describe them. Huh. So people in Sumeru do dream after all. In fact, we're all in one big dream together right now. Correct answer. Now, how did you conclude that the Akasha is capable of this? It is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. Oh, okay. Those dream-controlling creatures in the forest also get their power from the Dendro Archon, right? That would explain why the Akasha has the ability to control people's dreams, too. But is stealing everyone's dreams really how the Akasha compiles their wisdom? 
dreams are fantastical, complex, and full of imagination. People's brains are the most active when they're dreaming. In other words, dreams are rich bundles of human wisdom. So, in other words, the complete opposite of how Hypatia understood it. Hermit remembers her saying that the sages think dreams are foolish delusions. And the fact that no one dreams is a blessing from greater Lord Rukutavada. Hmm. So it was all a dirty trick? The real story is that the sages from the Academia are using the Akasha to steal people's dreams for their own use, huh? Oh? By the sounds of it, you understand the current situation pretty well. So then, what about the samsara? The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? That doesn't sound right. Those spaces kept disappearing before my eyes. But as soon as that beep sounded, many more spaces materialized. Those dreamscapes kept vanishing. But as soon as that beep sounded, more new spaces appeared. is keeping each person's brain in a constant dream state, but also separating their consciousness from their own dream. Their disembodied consciousness is placed inside the collective dream of the Subzerus Festival along with everyone else's, while their now vacant dreams are harvested by the Akasha. No one is any the wiser as another day passes in the dream, and so begins another Samsara cycle. People wake up to yet another dream about the Subzerus Festival, the dreams that belong to them are once again harvested by the Akasha. And so it continues. So, this is like a dream factory. And the Akasha is a dream harvesting machine. Did Paimon get that analogy right? <laughs> Very good, Paimon. Using analogies well is an excellent habit to get into. Okay. So that beep we keep hearing is actually from our real-life Akasha terminals. Taking off our terminals in this dream doesn't do anything! Alright, last question. Who am I?
that I think about it, wasn't illusions a hint that we're all dreaming? Now that I think about it, wasn't illusions hinting at the sage's deception of Sumeru's people? They say that alchemical divination is the Dendro Archon's divine revelation. So then, if Nahida has referred to herself as the Moon... That doesn't sound... <laughs> so you know this. Uh -huh, I thought that one would be the hardest question. That's why I put it last. That wasn't hard at all. Even Paimon guessed that. Everything about you is different. We just didn't want to expose you, is all. Now that you mention it, Nahida, you've been hinting to us since the very beginning. It's funny. Thinking back to when we were asking all over the place for info about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Paimon didn't expect to meet you like this. Yes, those can wait until we're back in real life. On the other hand, I'd be happy to answer any more questions you have about here and now. You asked me this question before. My answer was, it would literally blow your minds. Now that you know this is all a dream, this answer should hopefully make more sense. Have you heard the saying, don't wake a sleepwalker? Likewise, if someone suddenly had told you all this instead of you learning it on your own, your notion of reality and dream would be thrown into irreversible confusion. I couldn't expose you to that kind of risk. That's why I could only give you very subtle hints and some suggestions. Long story short, I'm really sorry I had to keep you guessing. Firstly, this dream we're in is completely based on reality. People have already experienced this Subzerus festival, so it would be very difficult for them to find anything that strikes them as surreal. Secondly, you're probably wondering why people don't have any memories from earlier Samsara, right? That's because people don't remember their dreams most of the time anyway. And in any case, their actual dreams are being taken away from them by the Akasha. So whenever they wake up in this dream of the Subzerus Festival, they don't remember anything from their previous identical dream. That reminds Paimon. Traveler had a dream when we were in the Avidia Forest, but couldn't see what it was about after waking up. Is that an example of what you mean? Yes. Only after receiving the blessing of Dendro can a person gain the Dendro Element's dream-enhancing power. That explains the feelings of deja vu. Meanwhile, everyone else has no idea that they are in the Subzerus Festival Samsara, while their dreams are stolen from them over and over again. Can humans really keep dreaming forever like this? Will it ever end? And if so, when? You might say your mental fatigue has already answered this question. Eventually, there's only so much that people can tolerate. Especially those whose health is compromised to begin with. Like Dunyarzad. This relentless exploitation takes an even harder toll on them. People's lives are at stake here, and nobody knows a thing! We've got to put a stop to this! I know, right? Why did they have to base this dream on my birthday? Could it really just be a coincidence? Even you don't know the reason? Wow, now that's strange. The Academia Sages are determined to harvest lots of dreams in a short time, no matter the cost. They have to be up to no good. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about it. Traveler, do you have any information?
Okay. Nahida said the Akasha relies on the power of a Gnosis to operate, as it is the manifestation of the God of Wisdom's power. It compiles the wisdom of the entire populace, and it grants knowledge to the people. The Grand Sage said, Go celebrate the birth of that god to your heart's content. Did he mean something more? Those spaces remind me of... dreams. Like the one I had in the Avidia Forest. Except these have no sign of human presence. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. Celebrate the birth of that god? Could it mean... Saving the people of Samaru with no regard for their safety. No matter what they're trying to do, this is unforgivable. After we end the Subzerus Festival, Samsara, we have to look into them. How can the sages of the Academia do this behind their Archon's back? This is ridiculous! In the end, I'm just the moon. The real sun is long gone. A sun and a moon? Nahida's talking in riddles again. Oh, we're out of time today. I'll tell you how to break free of the samsara tomorrow. See you then. Good morning, Nahida. Uh, wait. Paimon remembers everything. Should we instead say good morning, Lesser Lord Kusanali? <sighs> hey, what's wrong, Nahida? You don't look too good. I'm afraid that what you're thinking right now is correct. Did Dunyarzad already disappear? No way. Are are we too late? The real Dunyarzad's consciousness has indeed disappeared. It can no longer endure the constant dream harvesting. Paimon can't believe it. Wait, so what about that other Dunyarzad? Just what is she? Is she also going to disappear? She's actually something like a puppet, but not completely. The real Dunyarizad's consciousness could no longer keep playing her role in this dream. So another Dunyarizad appeared to replace her in the dream. Just like the grass and the trees, that Dunyarizad is just a building block of the dream that helps to keep it going. But personality-wise, she's nothing like the real Dunyarizad. Puppets are stiff, and can't copy a living person's vitality. After all, they're just there as filler. No, speaking of which... The old Dunyarzad might not have been too different from a puppet. Dunyarzad truly believed that she met you within her consciousness. And it was you who inspired her! So you do remember her after all! Yes. Back then... Her family was overly protective of her. No one cared about her personality or thoughts. It was as if she only lived to stall her Elazar. I just gave her a little wisdom so she could look at life in a new way. So that she could be her own person. But even so, she still... from it. I'm still a long way off from being a real Archon. I couldn't even save her. If I were a competent Archon, 
I wouldn't have let my most faithful follower die at the Subseries Festival with so many regrets. Please don't beat yourself up over it, Nahida. It's the Sage's fault, and theirs alone! I... I'm not beating myself up. All I did was to rationally observe the distance between myself and a real Archon. Don't be like that, Nikita. Even real Archons are still allowed to be sad. To prevent more tragedies like this, we must end the Samsara as soon as possible. Great, but how do we do that? Although the Subzerus Festival dream is under the Akasha's control, only humans can dream. Even the Akasha is unable to create them. That means this dream belongs to a host who created it. Huh? So, how should we find that person? Well, if this is someone's dream, then everything here must come from deep within their consciousness. Which means, with the power of imagination, they can change anything in this dream. Imagination? What do you mean by that? Imagination means breaking through what you perceive as normal. Like when a server at a tavern brings a plate to you, you naturally assume that food is on it. However, if you're the dream's host and you become aware that you're dreaming, when you imagine gold and more on the plate, the dream will respond in kind. And the server really will bring you gold and mora. But right now, our host is unaware that this is a dream. No matter how many times they're served, it will always be food. Find some way to make that person realize that they're dreaming. Usually, once that happens, the person will wake up and the dream samsara will be broken. How are we going to find them, though? If it could be anyone, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack! And even if we did find them, how are we supposed to make them realize they're dreaming? After all, like you said, don't wake a sleepwalker! It's extremely difficult, yes. But the only ones who can do it are you two. Remember, Everything you've achieved up to this point has all been for the sake of finding the host and ending the samsara. As for me, uh, during this time, I'll be out of town. Out of town? Are you going to that place full of dreams where the traveler went? Yes. I, I want to try something. There must still be a small wisp of possibility. Hurry and go! Dreams are supposed to be fantastical, romantic, and full of pleasant surprises. Unnecessary things like this samsara need to end. <sighs> Paimon's still a little upset that we've come this far only for Dunyarzad to... She was such a good person, with such a simple wish. But fate was against her. Yeah, saving Dunyarzad is what kept us going this whole time. But we mustn't lose hope, Traveler. Dunyarzad would definitely want to see us save everyone else. So let's break the Samsara for her sake. Paimon's wondering, do you think the Sages would get one of their own to be the host of this dream? Feels like it would be easier to control it that way, no? on there being other factors beyond their control, like Nahida and us. So, who do you think the host of the dream is? Oh, that would make sense. Ferris the Knight of Flowers is a symbol of the whole Subzeru's festival, right? Pretty core character. Let's go ask him some questions, shall we?
The world remains constant over the centuries. But human life is like the dew at dawn, or a bubble rising through water. Transitory. You're back. You left in a hurry last time. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. Just, um, it's a little hard to explain. Uh, would you mind taking part in a little experiment with us? An experiment? That came out of nowhere. I'm listening, though. What do you need me to do? Could you make a wish? You want me to make a wish? Is that a new sub zeru's festival tradition or something? Less questions, more wishing! Okay. Okay. My wish. My wish. Um, okay. I'm a little nervous saying this out loud, but I want Miss Dunyarzad to be happy. I noticed earlier that she looked a bit down, and she wasn't really talking to anyone. She just doesn't seem like herself. She's always so gentle and kind, and all the kids love her. I've also wondered if the reason she asked me to be Ferris Knight of Flowers is because I'm special to her, or something. So... You have a crush on Dunyarzad? Uh, <laughs> oh, is it that obvious? After what I just said, I guess it is. When she placed the hat of the Knight of Flowers onto my head, she said to me, I want everyone to have a happy sub -Zeru's festival. What she didn't realize was that I'm not that interested in how everyone else feels. In that moment, I just wanted to be her knight of flowers for the rest of my life. Fifty years, a hundred years, I'll serve her till the end of time. Okay, yeah, that was a bit much. Felt like the right moment to get it off my chest, but <clears throat> that was pretty embarrassing. Okay. I'm ready to make my wish. I would like Miss Dunyarzad to appear in front of me right now with a smile on her face. Here goes. Please come true. I'm gonna open my eyes. Oh. Uh. Oh. You're... What? Fucky? Sorry, but only one portion of Yelda candies per person. Back home you go. <laughs> nice try, you two. Anyway, never mind. I don't need to see her appear right in front of me. As long as she's happy. <laughs> uh, guess he isn't the host of this dream after all. Should have expected it wouldn't be this easy. Everyone who knows Dunyarzad loves her. But 
None of them has any idea that she... My lady, step back. That sounds like Dia! Oh, right. This is when Dinyarzad bumps into the kidnappers. Inactivity serves no purpose whatsoever. It's you. Great timing. Please take... Hey, this is my job. The homie Yanni's pay me, not you. You... Ugh, fine, all right. Knock yourself out. Why are you so worked up anyway? It's not like I don't trust your fighting skills. Anyway, watch yourself. So you got yourself some backup. <laughs> Suit yourself. You're going down. Uh, a new punching bag. Yeah, everybody, stand back. There is no escape. Where do you think you're? <laughs> 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 Adventure time. Off we must light it up. There is no escape. Traveler, were you just taking your anger out on those guys? You and Nikita both. Dinyarzad wouldn't want to see you two like this. Oh, and speaking of her, Paimon just remembered something. Remember how during the first Sub-Zero's festival, before the Samsara started, we came here with Dunyarzad because she wanted to pick something up? She said it was because she had forgotten something. Okay. So Paimon's memory is working so far. Anyway, Paimon also remembers that she is staying somewhere around here. She pointed it out to us the night before the Sub-Zero's festival. Yeah, even if it's only a tiny clue, it'll probably still help us more than this needle in a haystack search. This is the place. It's rude to enter other people's spaces without permission, but... Desperate times call for desperate measures! Hey, the windows are unlocked! Okay, uh, I'm 
Someone's gonna take a peek inside. This was only a temporary residence, so there was pretty much nothing inside except this book on the table. Should we open it? Junior-Zod wrote all of this. Sounds like she was always thinking of us even while we were away. Even though she was also busy preparing for the Subzeru's festival and had all her health problems to worry about, she must have wanted to give this to us as a gift on the day of the Subzeru's festival, right? If we hadn't found this book, we never would have known. But now that we know, we can't even thank her. Hey! Where are you off to now? Dunyarzad's puppet. Traveler? You must be exhausted. Come to think of it. We've been stuck in this place for a really, really long time. Heck, even the last time we were chatting happily with Dunyarzad feels like an eternity ago. Paimon still remembers when we were sitting here, and the way her eyes sparkled when she talked about Milu's dance of Subzeru's. There will always be frustrations in life, but I know that the point of living is not to leave behind any regrets. That was what the real Dunyarzad said, wasn't it? Does that mean... Yes, Traveler. What is it? Oh, so she's still just a puppet. But just now, how come... What? Where are we going this time? If you continue to resist, we will have to order an investigation into every single event organizer. The Grand Sage has already granted you much leniency. I advise that you exercise tact. Oh. 
How did things turn out like this? Traveler? Uh, you don't have to get involved. He's a sage from the Academia. I don't want to drag you into this. Traveler? Traveler? What the heck are you doing? If you get arrested by the Academia, that's another day gone to waste! Wait, they're not reacting. Have they been scared stiff? Oh, of course. If this is the sage's plan, they wouldn't put themselves through this. So they're just substitutes. What is this? What happened to the Grand Sage and his entourage? Like I said, they symbolize the goddess of flowers. It's just a shame that all the real body stars went extinct after her death. Yes, the greater lord brought forth new body saras in memory of the goddess of flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful shade of purple. shade of purple aren't these flowers real potty sars just like the ones from the legend <gasps> i didn't even notice down your zod did you find these but didn't you just say all the real flowers went extinct after the goddess of flowers passed away so al yeah what's going on here uh, uh huh You guys are acting weird. But okay, I'll try. Hmm. Hey! They disappeared! So Nilu's the host! What a surprise! Purple body Saras don't exist in the real world anymore. But in Nilu's subconscious, they can appear as decorations on the stage. It's just like the example Nahida told us. People assume there will be food on a plate, and Nilu assumed there would be real potty Saras in the flower pots. So when you saw the flowers, you instantly knew it was Nilu? But if we want to end the samsara, we need the host to become aware that they're dreaming. How should we make Nilu realize that? Am I dreaming? Huh? <laughs> so I'm right. Is this Lesser Lord Kusanali responding to our celebration of the Sabzeru's festival? But you aren't completely wrong either. Uh, the point is, what made you think this is a dream? As far as you know, people in Sumeru don't dream, right? Yeah, but have you heard the tale of the first sage? To prevent a calamity, he went on a journey to find the Dendro Archon. Ooh, sounds familiar. Dinyarzad told us a story like that when we first arrived in Sumeru City. So, it was about the first sage, huh? Yep, but in the part you heard, he hadn't become the first sage yet. There's more to the story. His piety and wisdom were acknowledged by the Dendro Archon, and she finally gave her blessing to him. All kinds of spectacular scenes appeared in front of the first sage, as if all the knowledge in the world was being painted onto a canvas right before him. He was captivated. After who knows how long, he mastered all the knowledge he could comprehend. 
Afterward, he said to the Dendro Archon, I miss my parents, my wife, and my children. I've been away from home for far too long. They must be worried. The Dendro Archon smiled. The next second, the sage found himself lying in his bed, as if he had just woken up from a dream. His wife lying next to him said, You're off to search for the Dendro Archon today, aren't you? Have a safe journey, my love. In the end, the first sage took care of many disasters in Sumeru City and founded the Academia. <sighs> what a happy ending. So, the first sage was dreaming ever since the beginning of the story? He never went on his journey? Yes. But his faith and determination were conveyed to the Dendro Archon. So she blessed him in the form of a dream. Paimon understands where you're coming from now. That's a really interesting connection. But we really gotta wake up soon, like the sage in the story! I see. Well, it just so happens that today's sub -Zero's festival is almost over, too. Since we're in a dream, let's make this final dance of sub -Zero's as beautiful as we can. Dedicate this to our god, the dance of sub -Zerus. I'd be lying if I said I had no regrets. I would have loved to see Nilo's dance. Traveler. Oh, Paimon feels like she's been asleep for the longest time. Paimon's head feels super heavy. Did we oversleep? Do you even remember going to sleep last night? Paimon thinks it was after the Subzero's festival. The Subzero's festival! Have we finally escaped from the Subzero Samsara? Quick! Take off your Akasha Terminal! She's not in her room! What happened? What usual spot? <laughs> well, 
turn, traveler, El Paimal. And thank you, Dunyarzad, for organizing the Subzeris Festival for me. I'm sorry, who are... Oh, a traveler, Paimon. I have something amazing to tell you. I just had a dream. And I saw Nilu performing the dance of Subzerus. was acting weird when we met at the Subzerus festival. And... Dunyarzad, did you save her? It's a really long story. We shouldn't disturb her. Her consciousness is still weakened. Let's chat somewhere else. Hmm, how about by the Traveler's favorite bench? Dunyarzad first. It's such a relief that she's all right. Mm -hmm. After we parted on the last day of the Subzerus Festival, I left the city and saw what the Traveler had described. Among the countless dreams, I found one that was growing fainter and fainter. This proved my suspicion. Once Dunyarzad could no longer bear the Akasha harvesting her dreams, her consciousness began to dissipate. But this also meant it escaped the Akasha's control. Such a small fragment of consciousness can't last for very long, though. It will return to its original dream, where both will gradually fade until they completely disappear. I used all the power I had to keep her dying dream alive as long as possible, but it still wouldn't have lasted for much longer if it hadn't been for you two breaking the samsara. So it looks like we did manage to save Dunyarzad in the end! Not a moment too soon! Huh? Why are you two smiling so happily? I thought you'd be so moved that you'd start crying. Hmm... I need to spend more time observing human emotions. Both are fine. Everyone reacts differently. All right. You two must have a lot of other questions for me, right? After all, you saved my faithful believer. As your reward, I will answer any and all questions. At the Avidia Forest, there was this incense that made the Traveler fall unconscious and dream of a huge tree and a red sky. You also heard someone's voice, right? It said, Whirl, and forget me. Yeah! So you do know! We've been wanting to ask you what that was about, and if the red sky was related to Conria. Hmm... It seems like the Traveler established a connection to Ermensoul. That was a message left by Greater Lord Rukadavata's residual consciousness in Ermensoul. Perhaps her last memory before she died. As you two probably know, Greater Lord Rukadavata disappeared after the disaster in Conria. The timings of these events do line up, so your suspicions are reasonable. 
A message from Greater Lord Ruka Devata? We thought it was from the Scarlet King. The Scarlet King? That god who died even longer ago? Uh, some present-day desert dwellers still worship him. You've probably just heard some of their conspiracies. Okay, so what does the message mean? <sighs> I still haven't managed to decipher it. Even the Akasha isn't currently capable of doing that. Greater Lord Ruka Devata's residual consciousness in Ermin Soul seems to be contaminated with something that has a very dangerous aura to it. Many devoted scholars go mad as soon as they connect their consciousness. I've warned the Academia about this many times, but people still keep falling victim to it. But I believe this is the key to saving Ermin Soul. That's why I've kept trying to decipher it. So the tree in the vision was Ermansoul? Oh, Tainari also said that Ermansoul is sick! Is it because of the contaminated consciousness? But even if you can't figure out what that vision was all about, it seems like our search for you was all in vain. The Traveler wasn't affected after coming in contact with that consciousness. I've never seen anyone like that. With you here, we may have a chance at deciphering it. No, we must decipher its secrets. I've already eliminated all other factors that might affect Ermansoul. This is the only one left. This puzzle has life and death at stake. It could determine Ermansoul's fate, as well as to that's. Accurate. I'm using the Akasha as a medium to occupy Catherine's consciousness. Uh, how did you do that? Poor Catherine. Uh, does this mean you can also occupy other people's consciousnesses? Theoretically, I can enter anyone's mind as long as they're wearing their Akasha terminal. The Akasha is the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. As Lesser Lord Kusanali and the first Akasha Terminal, my consciousness has always been linked to the Akasha. I've always respected my people's free will, so I've never actually occupied their consciousness. When necessary, I just borrow this Bionic Sinjnayan puppet. Uh, oh, hold on. Did we just learn some deep, dark secret? So Catherine is... No. Wonder Paimon felt something was off about her. What about your own body? Why do you need to borrow other people's? Don't you live in the sanctuary of Surasthana? That story begins a long time ago. After Greater Lord Ruka Devata disappeared, the sages found my newly born self and took me back to Sumeru. At that time, I was young and weak. The sages kept me in the sanctuary of Surasthana ostensibly for the sake of protecting me. But I hardly heard from them since. However, I do understand that they had hoped to find Greater Lord Ruka Devata instead of me, a symbol of her passing. So the sages basically put their new Archon under house arrest? How dare they? Why don't you teach them a lesson, Nahida? In some ways, they aren't wrong. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was omniscient and omnipotent. Even after her death, the Akasha is still empowering this nation. And I... I'm still really far away from being able to call myself the God of Wisdom. Moreover, the Academia is also more proficient at governing this country. My existence has little meaning. Believers. Just look at the sub -Zero's festival. Everyone who showed up truly loved you. <laughs> Thank you for the kind words. But I honestly don't need physical freedom as long as I can connect my consciousness to the Akasha. Trying to find a way to save Ermansoul is my life's mission and top priority. I will work on that and try to live up to being a deity in the meantime. Every once in a while, 
I will also take up the duties of the God of Wisdom and enlighten a lost soul here and there. Doing all that should be enough. There has never been any big problems with the Academia's governance of Sumeru. This is the first time I've seen them step out of line. I wonder what caused them to go down this path, and what they hope to achieve. Even though the city's residents haven't noticed anything strange, if the Traveler hadn't broken the Subzeru Samsara, the situation could have become dire. I tried to do some investigating in the Akasha, but I couldn't find anything suspicious. And all the people of interest seem to purposely avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. I think they're deliberately trying to hide something. Oh, that reminds Paimon. In Gundarvaville, there was a sage who had invited Kainari to join some kind of project. Could it be related? Regardless, I need to first investigate the sage's motives, make things right, and punish them if needed. But I'll have to be discreet, or they'll see me coming. You mean how the Akasha stops you from having dreams? Yeah, it's been such a long time. No one's noticed something's up? It's not that no one noticed. It's more like no one cared. Ultimately, it's all rooted in the Sage's misdirection. Misdirection? The Sage has convinced everyone to believe that being unable to dream is a sign of rationality and wisdom. Not dreaming is a badge of honor in Sumeru. Even if the truth is that their dreams are being reaped by the Akasha. With their propaganda in place, the Sages can maximize their use of the Akasha to facilitate their research. Besides, Greater Lord Ruka Devata must have created the Akasha in the hopes that it could be used to its full potential. That's why I've never come out strongly against this. <sighs> anyway, the perspective advocated by the sages drowned out any voices of doubt. By now, even those who never use Akasha terminals find it too shameful and embarrassing to talk about their dreams. Got it! I hope my answers were satisfactory, seekers of knowledge. To be honest, maintaining Dunyarzad's fading dream took a lot of mental energy. I think I may need to rest for a while. Oh, and you don't need to worry too much about the Sage's activities for now. The Akasha won't be able to conduct another project on the scale of the Subzeru Samsara in the immediate future. Go and get some sleep. Leave everything to us. <laughs> what a relief. <sighs> this is truly the most exhausting birthday I've ever had. Hmm? Traveler? Paimon? Why am I here? Do either of you know? I... Uh, maybe you were sleepwalking. You know you can't wake up a sleepwalker. We, uh... We happened to walk by, so we thought we'd wait for you to wake up! I see. Huh. I should visit my maintenance personnel sometime. Oh, I'm fine. I better go. Thank you.
Lord's deer is but a backdrop. to be here in Gundarvaville looking for inspiration. But how do we find him? Should we yell his name at the top of our lungs? Hey, buddy. What's your name? What are you doing here all alone? Do you live in Gundarvaville? Regardless, don't worry. As a trainee forest ranger, I'll do everything I can to help you. <sighs> Hi, Miss Forest Ranger. I'm Rozzy. Don't mind me. I know the way back to Gundarvaville. When people say, don't mind me, what they really mean is don't worry about me. That's all the more reason not to leave you alone. <laughs> hey, don't cry. What's wrong? Take your time. You can tell me all about it. Huh. That voice sounds familiar. I once heard it somewhere before. Oh, it's Kalei! And a child who seems to be upset. Oh. Let's go say hi. Hi, Kalei. How have you been? Ah, I'm on a traveler. I've been doing pretty well. Thanks for asking. I'm helping Master Tainari patrol the forest. What brings you here? We're here on an errand. We heard your voice, so we thought we'd come ask you for help. You seem kind of busy, though. <laughs> um, I'll be fine. Y you go help them first, Miss Forest Ranger. I'm okay, really. <laughs> the sand got into my eyes, that's all. What a well-mannered child. Sand? There is not a lot of sand in a forest. You keep saying you're okay because you don't want us to know what you're upset about, right? Maybe. That's exactly why you have to get it off your chest. Here's a trick. If you're keeping a secret that bothers you, you can try telling it all to a tree hollow. Uh, a tree hollow? Yeah, a tree hollow. Do you know Tanja's stories? The R&R &R living in the forest will patiently listen to every word children say. Maybe there really are R&R &R living in the tree hollows that will listen to you. You like the R&R &R stories too? Of course, I love them. Oh, people who like R&R &R are the best. <laughs> Okay, I'll try telling my secrets to a tree hollow. Thanks, Miss Forest Ranger. You know everything. <laughs> Aw, you're just exaggerating. Anyway, I'm trying to be like my friend, who always does her best to cheer people up when they seem sad. So, how are you doing? Feeling any better now? The forest is very dangerous, so how about we stick together? Sure. Children who are lost in the rainforest is all part of her forest ranger's duty. So, what was it you wanted help with? You're not lost too, are you? Okay, so you're looking for a children's author from Port Olmos called Tanja. And he's here in Gandarverville, looking for inspiration. Uh, wait, when you say Tanja, do you mean THE Tanja? That's right, Uncle Tanja! 
So he's in the area? Looking for inspiration for a new story as we speak? This is amazing. Uh, can you wait for me for a second? I'll run Razi back to Gandarverville and then I'll be right back. I've always been curious what the man behind those incredible stories is like in person. <sighs> Tanja's just a normal guy. Even so, he must be more creative than most people. <sighs> Wait, hold on. Rossi, do you mean you've met Tanja before? Mm-hmm. He's my dad. Your dad? Tanja's your dad? As in you're Tanja's son? Uh-huh. Ah, Paimon sees. That guy at a car crash told us that Tanja brought his son along with him. So he meant Rossi. Why are you here on your own, though? Did you and Tanja get separated? I... <laughs> we had an argument. I was upset, so I ran off here by myself. Oh, in that case... We should take you back to Gandarverville first. Then we'll look for your dad and tell him where you are. No, I'm, I'm good. Thanks for your advice, Kale. I'm not so upset anymore. Come with me. I'll take you to him. Razi? Paimon thought we'd be spending the whole day looking for him. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm actually gonna meet the Tanja. Oh. <laughs> hmm. So Tanja headed this way. and shattered.
Here we go. Traveler, let's go. The world is full of lost ballads just waiting to be rediscovered. Sure, I'll play you another tune. But the foxy and apple. 